Welcome to the journey home. My name is Catherine and I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. The following is a oracle reading for you cards that I pulled that I will read fully from and without advertisement. Please subscribe, hit the like and enjoy your reading. This card chosen for you is from the Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud. Card 21. The fairy who was kissed by the pixies. Love given, love received. Metaphorical open heart surgery. Pixies kisses are not chocolate like the well-known Hershey's kisses, but the pixies claim that they are a whole lot sweeter and don't do anything dreadful to your teeth. However, the pixies have been munching fairy chocolate. Some pixie kisses give people freckles. As Brian wrote, the pixies say that there cannot be too much kissing. A fairy kiss is a blessing indeed. Pay attention when you feel a fairy touch on your cheek or lips. Pixie kisses, in fact all fairy kisses, are to be noticed and savoured. If you do notice, you will find yourself smiling without meaning to and feel a surge of warmth swell in your heart. This fairy, Morna, is the queen of love, all kinds of love brotherly, sisterly, parental, friendly, and unconditional or conditional, either or both. She tells us, it takes perfect people to have a perfect love, but we imperfect as we all are, may have many loves, each one perfect for who we are and for what we need now. These loves may not feel perfect, they may not look perfect from the outside, but they fit us now. If we don't like them, she shrugs. And we need to change ourselves so that a different kind of perfection fits us. Here we see Morna in her role as heart surgeon, using the power of love to help us open our hearts when we have closed them out of fear, helping us to expand and become more of what we have the potential to be. Yes, it is true, having an open heart, being well, willing to love and be loved, makes us vulnerable vulnerable to loss and grief. But Morna assures me, and I believe her, that once a heart is truly and fully open, even the deepest grief becomes bittersweet, like dark chocolate, and there is no pain that is not balanced by the greater joy of love. The feeling of giving love is what makes us feel good. What keeps us from enjoying it fully is our desires to own others to have them constantly prove our importance to them. Such proof is impossible. However, this kind of a conditional and self-limited love is part of how we learn about real love. If ever you hear yourself asking, do you really love me? Or saying, I don't think you really love me. Then you know that the love you are giving to the other is conditional and limited. Morna would like to help us learn to love others without conditions and she also would like us to learn to love while still staying properly centered within ourselves. It is important for us not to lose ourselves and others and let their desires become ours while losing sight of what we need to, for fulfillment in our own lives. In the long run or even in the not so very long run, that never works out. We only think we know what others want and need, and sooner or later we get it disastrously wrong, usually by thinking we know what they ought to need. We are all learning about love, and in the process of learning, we all act as teachers for each other. Ram Dass said, The karma of relationships is the hardest karma there is. Believe it, Morna advises, and this is truly no matter and this is true no matter what the relationship is. But for all that, love is in its pure sense is the fast track to self-realization and enlightenment. The wild thing at the top of the picture is filled with bliss and is longing to cuddle its way to enlightenment. Remember, everything and everyone in fairy glows with its own light. So do we. Much of that light is the glow of love remembering that it is important. Opening our hearts more widely to the giving and receiving of love evokes the well-kissed fairy within. The message here is, 
Oh, wow. What can I say here? Love, sweet love. Accept it, burnish it, add to it, and pass it on. The presence of the fairy who was kissed by the pixies suggests giving and receiving love and intimacy in any of the wide variety of relationships. She gives notice that this is a time to open and heal our hearts. Different aspects of life may well be flowing happily together, healing separations and hurts from the past. Bonding may take place and deep feelings emerge. Changes for the better may occur in all aspects of life, but especially in relationships, which may be deepening and becoming richer. You may be experiencing love therapy for opening the heart as new relationships begin and old ones develop. Enjoy. The warning here, though, is when we block love, obviously we refuse to give or receive it. An interesting thing here is that love is an energy, an aspect of life force, and it flows through us whether we admit it or not. The unhappy souls who refuse to acknowledge it still have it within them, ignored, denied. Another way we block love is to become the kind of people pleaser who wants us to do everything for us others, but won't let them give in return. The twisted energy of love shows up as jealousy, possessiveness, attention-seeking, and demanding behavior. It is focused on getting rather than giving and results in unhappiness rather than happiness. It is also based on the entirely false idea that there is not enough love in the world for everyone to have as much as they need. Another twist is believing that it is up to others to make us happy, when really this is our own responsibility. One of the worst things we can do is to deny love, to pretend we feel it when we don't, and to pretend we don't when we do. Another is to try to destroy love between others by any means, for any reason, whatsoever. And the worst of all is taking advantage of the love of others to, do, to betray them. Fairies are both luminous and illuminating. Before I read the second card for you, I just a reminder to please hit the like and help me beat those algorithms for every like that you give me is potentially a thousand suggestions and recommendations on YouTube. Thank you and God bless. Enjoy the rest of the reading. This card chosen for you is from the Fairy Forest, an oracle of the wild green world by Lucy Cavendish. Card number 16, soul kin, recognition, family, kinship. We often wish for our relationships to endure long beyond their lifespan. Friendships and relationships have been drawn to us according to the lessons the soul wishes to learn. There are relationships that are more super superficial and there are those that touch us deeply. With great love comes the possibility for pain. And each of us must come to some kind of peace with the truth that there are relationships that will not be sustained for this lifetime. When we feel this deep recognition and when we find it very difficult to let a person go, we may be dealing with soul kin a being with whom we may be traveling through lifetimes. This thread of relationship is strong and connected with you at present, and you have encountered a person who speaks to your very soul. Know that for now, this connection is grounded, nourishing, and full of faith. It may shift and change in time, but for now, the friendship is strong and full of mutuality respect for each other's growth, and dedication to the highest purpose for both of you. In time, this may change as your souls have their own destinies, and this sometimes means there will be a departure from a common code and path. But for now, this connection is one of soul family, of kin, and is one you can draw on for your own sustenance and also contribute to for the beautiful purpose of being a shining light for others. Artwork, Dusk Elves. 
If you're still here, thanks for listening to this oracle reading. And please join us Wednesdays and Sunday nights live. If you would like some free cards pulled for you, I would love to pull them for you. Check the website out too. There are all kinds of perks for members over there. God bless and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.